I've cheated on my husband over 20 times and I don't bother hiding it because I secretly hate him. My husband is the biggest vagina in the world. Here's a little backstory. He and I met five years ago and as soon as we met, I was the one that was interested in him. Which drives me crazy now, the fact that I chased this man. Disgusting. All I did was ask him out on a date and he said yes. After that, he fell in love with me and I did too. Within the first couple of months of our relationship, I realized that he was extremely sensitive. This man would cry a lot and his feelings would get hurt very easily. So I basically had to start walking on eggshells to make sure I wouldn't offend him. For example, I I once did my own laundry and I didn't do his. Number one, he was really upset and number two, he started crying because he said that I didn't love him enough. His mood swings were all over the place. And then the worst part, he got fired from his job and basically didn't bother looking for another one. He told me that he wanted to live off of his savings for the next couple of years. This man never wanted to pay for anything. If we went out to dinner with his friends, he would never offer to pay for my dinner. His friends would pay for my dinner. I was so beyond embarrassed. I was footing the bill for everything. He barely paid me rent. So aside from him not ever paying for anything, and fully expecting me to pay for things, I began to hate him. You might ask me why I married him. He comes from a really rich family, so I thought he would eventually ask his parents for money. But no, he did not. Before I knew it, three years had passed. And like I said, he is such a big vagina. He always cries about everything. He was always in a bad mood. He was always getting sick. It got to the point where I couldn't even be around him because every time I was, all he would do was complain about what he was feeling that day. He always had a headache or his back hurt. And so he would ask me to do things for him. I was constantly having to give him massages. I was always going to buy him medicine. This man would wake me up at three in the morning and go ask me to buy stuff. I was literally taking care of my child. Oh, and let's talk about our sex life. It was boring. He always did the exact same thing. Never wanted to try anything new and basically always complained about having to do things to me because it pained him so i was completely unsatisfied like all the time i began hating him more and more every day even the sound of his voice triggers me you might ask me do i love him I do, I care about him, but I'm not in love with him. After realizing that I was living with the man-child, who made me do everything for him, who cried all the time, who was always so sensitive and always needed something, and complained 24-7, I decided to start cheating. A few years ago, I had met a guy through a co-worker. They always followed each other on Instagram, and I knew that he was attracted to me. And he's pretty hot. And rich and good-looking. So I decided to reach out on Instagram and ask him if he wanted to go out. Not only did he say yes, he planned a whole outing. We went hiking, and we went to get massages. Then he took me out to dinner. And then we went to his place and had amazing sex. I would see this guy about three times a week and i started hooking up with another guy that i met at the gym this guy was really hot but he didn't have a lot of money so we never really went out it was just plain sex but it was good about six months later i met another guy again amazing sex do you think my husband noticed anything no i would talk to these guys on the phone while my husband was in the same room i would be setting up dates with these guys in the same room as my husband do you think he cared no i would even wear sexy outfits to go out with them and he never asked anything he would just say have fun and then he would call me to complain about what he was feeling and what he wanted me to buy am i terrible for doing this my dad is marrying my ex-girlfriend. He's 38, I'm 24, and she's 26. This is all such a mess and I really don't know how I'm supposed to feel about it. For some backstory, my dad isn't my biological father. He and my egg donor started dating when I was two and got married when I was four and then got divorced when I was 16. Honestly, I was far closer to my dad than I was to my egg donor and my egg donor would regularly abuse the both of us. After the divorce, he tried to stay in touch with me but my egg donor purposely isolated him from me because she was so mad that he finally became confident enough in himself to escape from her abuse. She was able to get a protective order placed on both of us to completely limit contact after the divorce and then financially blackmailed me to continue to isolate me from him while she paid for my college. As soon as I graduated from college when I was 21, I completely cut off contact with her and reached out to him again, even though it had been over five years since we last spoke at that point. I was very happy to have him in my life again. My ex-girlfriend and I dated while I was in college. I was pretty low-key about the relationship because I was pretty sure if my mom ever found out I was a lesbian, she would cut me off completely. We started dating when I was 18 and dated for almost three years. I also never told my dad about her since we broke up only a few months after we reconnected. He did comfort me through the breakup, but he never met her or really knew anything about her. That brings us to last night. My dad and I have a standing dinner date for every other Wednesday, but we've been so busy for the last month, so I haven't seen him since before Thanksgiving. He told me he was bringing his girlfriend to tag along, and I have to admit, I was both sad because it wouldn't be just the two of us like it normally is, but also I was excited to finally meet her. Unfortunately, once I reached the restaurant, I'm at absolutely floored to see my dad sitting there with my ex-girlfriend and when my dad introduces her to me he introduces her as his fiance and he tells me that he wanted me to be the first to know apparently they got engaged two weeks ago but hadn't told anyone except for her parents who i've even met before i must have had a shocked look on my face because he starts going into this whole thing about how he knows that i might be uncomfortable with him dating a girl who's so close in age to me and how the age gap concerned him too especially because of my egg donor. Well, I would never compare him to her since she was literally a groomer who started dating her tutoring student when he was 17 and then married him when he was 19. The entire time I was talking to him though, I was staring right at my ex-girlfriend in complete shock. It ended up being way too weird for me, so I just told him that I needed to go after like five minutes. My dad texted me again today to tell me how sorry he was to ambush me with that information and that he was sorry he came off the way he had. He told me again that he understood if the age gap made me uncomfortable, but he hoped that I didn't think he was some kind of creep for dating a woman so much younger than him. He then told me that he felt like he was truly happy for the first time in the last 20 years and he hoped that I could come to 
accept this, even if it took me a long time. I, on the other hand, am just completely lost. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know that we dated, and I don't really know whether or not I should tell him. I don't have anyone to go to about this, since he's literally the person that I would vent to normally. So I ended up texting my ex, Steph, and like five minutes later, she called me. We talked for like half an hour, and she basically told me that she was just as surprised as I was, and that she had no idea that my dad was also her boyfriend. She said that she was still reeling and was planning on telling him soon, but didn't know how to do it. My dad doesn't have any social media except for LinkedIn, and doesn't really have any pictures of me in his house. I also don't really use social media very often in an effort to keep a woman who gave birth to me out of my life. The only picture I've ever seen is one from my college graduation, and that one is just in his office. So I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt. So at the end of the call with Steph, she told me that she was going to talk to him that night. I agreed and stayed by my phone, and I never got a call from my dad, which I thought was weird. I called Steph in the morning and asked her if she talked to him. She said that she had, and that he just needed some space right now. She said it would be best if I didn't talk to him about it. I thought that was really weird, so I decided to text my dad anyway. I asked him if Steph had talked to him, and he said that they had. I asked him if he wanted to talk about it, and he said that he would prefer not to, and that he thought it would be best if we just took a step back from our relationship. He said that he was really dealing with a lot, and this was all extremely hard for him. I have to say, I was pretty heartbroken when he said that, and it really got me thinking. A lot of you asked me if I'd be okay with my dad marrying Steph, and honestly, I really wouldn't be. I don't really like the idea of him dating anyone just because of how easily he's manipulated. I knew that he had been in a relationship, but I'd always told him that I didn't really want to hear about it, and that all that mattered was that he was happy. So we never really talked about his romantic life. However, I realized that even if I wasn't happy about it, and even if I seriously hated it, I wouldn't want to risk losing my dad over it. He mattered to me way more. So I decided to give him a day, and then went over to his place on Sunday. He looked pretty uncomfortable when he saw me, but I wasn't taking no for an answer, so he let me in. We sat in silence for a few moments before I basically just told him that we needed to talk about this. He was pretty quiet, and he was pretty much sitting as far as he could from me. So I told him that I really didn't want my previous relationship with Steph to change my relationship with him and that I was okay with him getting married. He looked kind of confused and what being friends with Steph had to do with any of it. It was my turn to be confused. So I asked him if Steph had talked to him again. He said she had and that he didn't really know how to deal with the information. It really seemed like he was tiptoeing around the subject and wouldn't even look me in the eyes. So I finally just asked him what Steph said. She told him that I was in love with him. My crazy manipulative ex really told him that I had admitted to my sexual attraction for him years ago. Apparently, her story was that we were friends, not girlfriends, just friends when I was in college, and I told her my secret. I was pretty appalled to learn that she said that, but I had told her about how the woman who gave birth to me had claimed that my dad and I had an illicit and inappropriate relationship to get the protective order. She knew that would be a sensitive topic for my dad, and apparently she encouraged him to take some space away from me. At that point, I was enraged. I couldn't believe that she would really do something like that. After that, I told him the truth. I told him about how Steph and I had dated years ago and how I was pretty sure she made all that up so I wouldn't tell him. He believed me pretty quickly, especially when I showed him the picture of the present that she gave me for our anniversary. My dad didn't really say anything besides just apologizing to me over and over again and telling me how sorry he was for believing her. I told him that it was okay and we just hugged it out. After that, he called up Steph and asked her to come over. I've honestly never seen him like that. He's normally such a happy guy, but the look on his face was terrifying. Steph did end up coming, and it looked like she knew what was going to happen because she was just staring at the floor. I won't lie, when I saw her, I really just wanted to rip her hair out of her head, but sitting beside my dad really helped keep me calm. My dad told her how he knew about the truth. Steph apologized over and over again to the both of us. Apparently, she had no idea that I was his daughter at the beginning of the relationship, and she didn't make the connection until they had been dating for over a year and had started discussing marriage. She said that she felt like it was too late at that point and she felt like she couldn't lose him. That was apparently why she pushed back on the idea of meeting me and why she really didn't want to have that dinner with me either, although she told him it was because of the age gap and that she was afraid of me judging her. Apparently, she was the one who convinced him that I'd be really against the relationship because of the age gap. She said that she told him the story about us being friends and me admitting my fantasies about my dad to her because she hoped that it would keep the two of us apart. When I asked her if she was really going to ruin my relationship with my dad over a lie like that forever, she said that she was going to tell the truth once they were married, since she was sure that he wouldn't want to go through a divorce again. Apparently, she would never dream of separating us again. What a load of BS this was. Steph was crying pretty much the whole time, and getting all of the information out of her was like pulling teeth. But eventually, we learned the truth, or at least as much as we could. She begged him not to end the relationship, but my dad was pretty much done at this point. That's when she really started going hysterical and I swear she had a full mental breakdown. She kept screaming at me how I ruined her life and I was honestly scared she was going to hurt me or my dad. Luckily, she didn't. She calmed out after a while, although she was still curled up on the floor. I felt pretty bad for her seeing her like that and then I remembered what she tried to do and I just got angry all over again. I'm guessing some of my dad's neighbors called the police because they knocked the door asking about a domestic disturbance. My dad is really scared of the police because of how the woman who gave birth to me had weaponized them against him in the past. So I ended up going to talk to them. Steph tried to grab me as I walked to the door, but she couldn't even get herself off the floor. I told the police that she was refusing to leave and eventually they were able to escort her out. My dad and I were pretty shaken up about that, but we decided to try and get some takeout while watching one of our favorite movies together. We were pretty much hugged together the entire time and we fell asleep on the couch together. It really felt so good. I was just so happy. So that's it. Steph is officially out of my dad's life and I convinced him to change the lock so she doesn't try to get in here again. I'm going to stay with him at least until he gets the locks changed. I told him that I'd like to move in here with him once my lease ends in March and he told me that he'd think about it. Right now, I just want to be around my dad. I can't say I'm happy about everything that happened, but I am really glad that my dad and I are okay. I think my boyfriend is in an incestual relationship with his sister. I know this sounds ridiculous, but listen before you call me insane. I'm running this because I can't sleep. I've dated him for a year. 
He's Italian and I'm an American student in Rome. Looking back, there had been signs even early on. I took all of this as cultural at first. One of our first dates, we were talking about our families and he showed me a picture of his sister and raved about her beauty. She is actually gorgeous. She's a classic Italian beauty and very chic. I was jealous of her then, but had no idea where this was going to go. I have only been around her a handful of times, but she had made it clear she does not approve of us dating. She's icy, distant, and hostile. She has said in front of me that he should be with an Italian. She speaks several different languages, including English, but every time I try to talk to her in English, she replies in Italian. You are in Italy. Speak Italian. She once told me he'll be gone soon. My boyfriend is openly very affectionate with her. He dances with her and whispers in her ear, kisses her cheek and the side of her mouth, hugs her closely. Every time I've seen them together, he's brought her a nice gift. People here are genuinely affectionate, but everything combined is off. Once at a family dinner, I was helping his mom with the food and he and his sister went out to the patio. I looked out and she was sitting on his lap. What sister does that? I have also seen her caress his bare chest at the beach. This same time at the beach, he carried her in the water with her legs wrapped around his waist and his hands were practically on her ass. If they did this when they thought I couldn't see, what do they do when they're really alone? He's also gotten into a physical fight with her boyfriend, but I'm not sure what it was about. Earlier tonight, my feeling got a lot worse. He never leaves his phone sitting around, but he did this time. He got a message from her and I looked over. She said, my heart is yours, my king, and we were made for each other. To clarify, this is a translation from Italian. I left without telling him. He blew up my phone, but I have no idea what to say to him. This has been my best relationship, but this cannot be normal, can it? I'm sick to my stomach and feel mortified thinking about this. A few things worth noting that I forgot to mention. She wears a locket with a photo of them in it. She was sitting across from me at dinner and opened it and gave me a taunting look. At the time, I didn't want to call her out and look crazy, but now I think she definitely was trying to rub it in my face. Also, not only was she sitting on his lap, but she was looking into his eyes and twirling his hair. I also saw him kiss her on the neck near her ear. It wasn't super smoochy, but to me it seemed like a weird place to kiss your sister. The response to my post made me feel confident. I wasn't wrong about them, so I eventually messaged him to break up. I didn't confront him about his sister because I wanted to part ways smoothly. Once I asked him why she hates me and he told me not to talk about her, so I don't think he'd react well. My fake reason was that there's no future for us since I'll be going back home and he'd never leave his country. He proved he doesn't care about our relationship because he didn't fight for it at all. He replied with a thumbs up. He might know that I saw the messages. It was exciting to be with him because he's so different from what I'm used to, but I was never going to be as special to him as his sister. Not even close. I believe the suggestions that I might have just been a cover. I wish I could link her Instagram because they both went out together the other night and she seems happy. I've unfollowed both of them. One more thing I want to say. I know my post focus on her being petty and taunting, but I don't want it to come across like I think he's innocent and she's Giselle. I saw him intimate most of the romantic moments. Thanks everybody for the encouragement. I am still creeped out and I feel used, but I'm glad to be free of them. Whatever is between them won't be hovering over me anymore. I tell you about what happened last year on my birthday if you're my boyfriend keep scrolling because I know you're gonna get mad at me for posting about this but it's for entertainment purposes only okay so basically last year I was talking to this boy on my birthday and I'm gonna name him toxic Taurus because he was toxic and he was a Taurus so last year was like the first year I didn't go out of town for my birthday and he invited me over to spend the night, which my mom would never let me spend the night at a boy's house. So I basically told her I was spending the night at my friend's house, which was a girl, and she took me. His friend and his friend Sneaky Link was also spending the night, so it wasn't just us two. So I got there, and like everything was going fine. Like we were like kind of all talking besides his friend Sneaky Link, and she was just like sitting there and it was really awkward but then like 30 minutes later toxic taurus started being so mean to me like, i was literally holding back my tears because he just started being mean to me out of nowhere so at this point it was like quiet for like 15 minutes and toxic taurus was like on the corner of his bed he had a big ass beanbag i was on that and then his friend was like leaning on the corner of the beanbag i was on and then his sneaky link was on the other corner of the bed so it was just so awkward so i started texting his friend like asking him like why is he being so weird and like mean and he was like the girl that's here is talking to 
talk to Taurus's crazy ex and telling her that you're here. And I was like, why does she care? His ex had gotten in the way of me and um, Toxic Taurus's relationship before. And this time he told me that they were like completely done, like no contact, no anything. So I was like so confused on why, like he was mad about it. So his friend was still texting me even though he was like right next to me but he was like don't worry about it like we just have to get this girl out of here so basically they made like a lie to her they were like my mom wants everyone to go home and i felt so bad because when they told her that she was like freaking out because she had no ride home but like after 10 minutes she ended up finding a ride home and then once she left he started being like all nice to me again and at this point i like wanted to leave because I was like so suspicious and the vibe was just off but I couldn't go home because it was like 11:30, and my mom did not know I was at a boy's house okay so I think we're at the part where toxic Taurus's friend sneaky link left and after that he started being all nice to me again and like we were all just like you know talking and whatever so I ended up staying the night I was an actual dummy last year okay and I like couldn't take the clues that him and his ex were like still keeping in contact so i just like ignored everything and the next day i went home around like five or six and i seen that his ex posted a tiktok of screenshots about what they were talking about um the day before and it was like saying that they were i guess trying to okay i can't do this i guess they were trying to like fix things like trying to make their relationship work which I had no idea about, okay, because he had told me that they were nothing. So I was, like, upset because how are you just going to lie to me? Even though I should have known because he had lied to me before. Oh, my gosh. And she posted a TikTok basically calling me a homewrecker. I tried to explain to her, like, what happened, but she did not care. She just hated me. And then all her friends, like, commented under my TikTok saying how I'm a homewrecker and stuff. So basically it was like really bad, but I didn't even care. Okay, I look crazy, but so I text I text Toxic Taurus and I was like, what is this about? Like you guys were talking and he was just like, don't worry about it. I don't like her. She's crazy and I like you, whatever, whatever. So I kept talking to him like the dummy I am. And then the next day he started being really mean again, like over text. And I literally stayed in the bathroom crying for two hours. I skipped two periods and yeah i was just like having a mental breakdown because i i was on my period so where's my oh so i was just crying so much and i ended up like breaking up with him well not breaking up with him because we were never dating but you know but now we're all good now i don't talk to him she has a new boyfriend and i don't think she hates me anymore I, 31 female, am struggling with some emotions right now, and I don't know how to feel. I would love a fatherly perspective. I just got married on Monday to my fiance, 34 male, of seven years. I've been so excited and planning this wedding for what feels like forever. I had tons of DIY projects, but of course, with food, venue, photography, etc., it still ended up being very expensive for us. Still, I felt like it was worth it for one day of true joy, and we both worked extra hours to pay for everything ourselves so we wouldn't have to ask for money from our families. However, my family is very religious. I was raised in a fundamentalist Christian household, but have since stepped away from that lifestyle. My now husband is, refreshingly, not religious at all. So, of course, they disapprove. This is partly the reason we waited so long to actually get married. I've spent so much time talking them through everything and felt that we had reached an agreement. They knew our wedding would not be a religious one and that we would have alcohol and secular music. My dad was willing to walk me down the aisle and verbally affirmed the wedding and welcomed my husband into the family. So I felt safe to finally move forward with a formal wedding. So wedding day comes, we had a short ceremony and planned a more involved reception with drinks, dancing games, fun speeches, and great food from our favorite food truck. As we made our entrance into the reception, I was so happy to see how beautiful everything had turned out. Everyone seemed happy and excited for us. Everyone except my parents, who were just sulking alone at their table. This should have tipped 
me off that something was brewing, but honestly, I just wanted to ignore them and enjoy our day. I had just sat down to eat. We were the first ones to get our food. The other guests had just started lining up when I noticed my mom and dad taking down decorations, like pulling centerpieces off of tables, removing place settings, taking down floral arrangements right, on and- the serving tables, that type of thing. So I paused to go ask my mom why they were taking things down. She waved me off that they were just tidying. I told her to stop. I hired people to do the teardown when it was time. She said okay and hurried me back to my table to finish eating. I was distracted then with our first dance and a couple of speeches. When I got a chance to really look around again, almost all of the decor was gone. Guests started leaving because dot dot dot. Well, it was basically an empty room. This was less than an hour into our reception. My parents disembarked shortly after and we were left with a deserted venue. Six loyal guests, no decor or food or snacks, a DJ and alcohol. We made the best of it and had a tiny dance party in the giant empty room that we had rented for many more hours. The DJ and coordinator took pity on us and danced too so we could get a few pictures. It was still fun, but the rest of the evening's plans, hosts, games, group dances, and photos were all ruined because everyone felt like they had to leave. I am so upset and disappointed that our expensive wedding was shut down like this. I'm not really sure if it was vindictive or if my mom and dad who grew up doing church weddings just felt like it was their job to do the teardown. But the fact that they seemed grumpy and were generally disapproving of our union makes me suspicious. Am I right to feel wronged here? Should I just let it go or is it worth confronting them? I do have a history of letting my family pretty much treat me like crap and I'm struggling now to balance keeping the peace and sticking up for myself. A man invited me on a private jet to go on a first date with him. So I'm in Paris for the Hermes show, and honestly, every time I'm in France, I say that as if I come often, this is my second time, but every time I'm in France, the two times, last time I was here, some guy just invited me on his yacht after party and was like, we'll be in Monaco in the morning, you should come. And I'm like, I have a flight out of, not um, an airport in Monaco tomorrow. Anyway, I'm at the show, and this guy who's wearing sunglasses the whole show, So I can't tell if he's really looking over at me, but it seems like he's looking over at me. But then it's confirmed that he was looking at me because he comes up to me after and he's like, is this your first show? And I'm like, how obvious was it? Was it that obvious? Then he's like, what other shows are you doing today? And I'm like, none, I'm tired, as if I was like invited to anymore. And we're kind of like small talking and very quickly he's like, well, if you're not doing anything tonight, then we should do dinner. And I had actually seen this happen, like literally earlier today, I saw a guy just kind of like go up to a girl that I don't think he knew and they like eventually made dinner plans. So I was like, maybe this is something that happens here. I think he's hot, but he still hasn't taken off his sunglasses. So like, I don't know. So I kind of like redirect the conversation. I'm like, what have your favorite shows been? Like, uh, where are you from? Which I guess he takes as like, oh, he's interested. Cause then he's like, please like, let me take you out to dinner. I'll like show you where I'm from in France. And so I'm thinking like, oh, like where he's from in Paris. And then he's like, yeah, it'll only take us like an hour to get there. And I'm like an hour. Like, but no, I can't drive an hour. He's like, no, we won't drive. We'll take a plane. And so now I'm laughing because I'm like, this man is joking. Like I, I say, I like, I can't like get a plane ticket right now. Ha ha ha. He's like, no, no, we'll take my plane at Le Bourget. What? I don't know why I just now decided to give him a French accent, um, but I guess that's the private airport here in Paris. So at this point, I'm like, you're very sweet, but like, I actually can't, like, I have to stay here with my friends, which is a lie because I'm here alone. So then he's like, well, let me, t- I'm actually not gonna try to do the French accent. Um, l- let me try, okay, can I Can I have your number? Like in case you change your mind, can I have your number? And I'm like, okay, sure. I mean, I won't, but okay. Okay, once upon a time I worked at Party City, right? And I worked seasonal. So I was working during Halloween. My manager that hated me walked in the back room where all the costumes were at and was like, I need somebody to volunteer to wear a costume and hold the sign that said honk for Halloween. <laughs> Surprisingly, nobody raised their hand. My hand shot up. I was like, me, 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 me. Because we weren't allowed to use our phones like on the floor. And if you've ever worked any type of holiday in retail, it is actual hell like working on the floor. So I was like, fuck that. I could totally use my headphones and use my phone and just be outside on the street. So he's like, mm, Taylor, okay, whatever, like go. He's like, what costume do you want? I was like, Spider-Man. And he hands me like the woman Spider-Man that's like the sexy one, the like tight one. And I was like, no, like I want the one with the muscles. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, the one with like the huge muscles, like I want that one. He's like, you want the men's Spider-Man? 
yes give it to me right now i put it on and i put the whole mask on everything like from head to toe nobody fucking knew it was me so then i got this like crazy idea like i'm gonna do some crazy shit on the street so i put my headphones in i grabbed the honk for halloween sign and i go walking on the corner mind you i worked at a very very busy party city so the corner where i was at was like a three-way street it was a very like tons of cars okay and so i had to stand by the red light i start <laughs> dancing like a psychopath i mean i was doing giddy up cowboy i was doing the fucking electric slide i was i started air humping the sign i was doing some crazy shit air guitar i was throwing myself on the ground and people were honking for halloween i'm out there for two hours i'm like hmm i should probably go back inside party city i go back into party city people are cheering wow spider-man giving me high fives i'm a fucking celebrity i get my little walkie talkie and put it on right Taylor to the front, the manager wants you. I'm like, fuck, what the fuck did I do? He probably saw me humping the sign, right? And this is the manager that hated me. He brings me to the back. He's like, hey, I just wanted to let you know, tons of people have been coming in asking if they could take pictures with you. <laughs> I'm like, what? And he's like, tons of people are coming in asking who's Spider-Man, who's Spider-Man. Oh my God, she's so funny. He's so funny. He's like, you're doing a really good job. Do you want to continue being Spider-Man and stay on the corner for the next like couple days? I'm like, sure. I continue being Spider-Man for the next three days. But then my manager was on his lunch break, the one that fucking hated me, and caught me doing my crazy shit on the street. And he was shaking his head laughing like, girl, what the fuck are you doing? And then I wasn't allowed to be Spider-Man anymore after that. <laughs> Can we just talk about the dedication that it takes to be able to date someone when you have strict parents? I'm going to share some things that I absolutely hate about dating when I used to live with my parents. Okay, how annoying is it that you literally have to whisper on the phone, especially when they're being all like flirty with you or whatever, and you're trying to be like sexy back. But you have to like whisper, you're like, babe, you're so hot, the things I would do to you. And then your mom immediately walks in the room and you have to end the call. Watermelon drops. You know what's even worse? When you literally can't go out any time of the day, let alone late at night. Like that's not even an option. And it sucks because like when I was with my parents, if I went out like once during the week for something that wasn't like school related, I was not allowed to go out like another day so you'd literally be going out with your man like once a week or you'd have to lie and be like i'm volunteering or i have a school project or whatever and then when your boyfriend also has strict parents you guys literally only hang out in his car y'all i am so sick of car dates car dates if you know what i mean like i could never i'm, I'm traumatized and you also could never catch me holding this man's hand in public or like even being near him in public because my cousin's friends dog's neighbor's sister could be in the mall and snitch on me i genuinely think the reason why i was so boy obsessed when i was younger was because i got such a rush out of like hiding it from my parents oh my god don't even get me started about breakups you know when you're so devastated and you're so sad but you can only cry in your room because you can't let your parents find out that you're sad so i'd literally stuff my face in my pillow and like cry and then come out and like do the dishes or like talk to my mom this is becoming like a kosis ad Anyways, there'd also be times where I would get gifts, not a lot of the time, but once in a blue moon. And I would just be like, yeah, my friend got it for me. And my mom just thinking like, oh, wow, she has such nice friends that just buy her flowers. It's funny because I was so boy obsessed when I was with my parents. And then when they kicked me out, I was just kind of like chilling. And I feel like I've noticed a pattern that like kids with strict, strict parents are like hypersexual. Like, don't you find that odd? Like, I'm... I've noticed every single person with strict parents, like, they fucking get around. And I'm wondering if it's probably because, like, our parents try so hard to repress us that we just, like, want it even more. Because now I can go out whenever the fuck I want. But do I? No. I sit in my room and I talk to my freaking phone and make makeup videos. Oh my god, one last thing. My first boyfriend, he also had strict parents, but one time he uh, snuck me into his house. Well, not really snuck. No one was home. But we were like literally planning escape routes in case his mom came home. We're like, hey, you're going to go through this door. You're going to go through this exit, this window. Funniest thing ever. Guys, I really think I need to make the strict parents thing, whatever, like a series. Because y'all be eating that shit up.